we are again continuing this current sermon series on mental health. In the first week, we saw how we need to fight back when we are emotionally challenged. And last week, we found that there are certain dangers that are on our way. We as children of God, we should be able to foresee the dangers that are going to affect our lives and that are going to affect our families. And we discuss on how God can protect us from the dangers. And today as we continue, let's read Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 11. Let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 8 verses 1 through 11. We also have that scripture in the screen. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. Verse 3, Romans 8. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he commended sin, sorry, he condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Let's go back to verse 8. That's going to be the key verse for the sermon this morning. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Shall we read that together as we get that on the screen? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. For our benefit, I want to read from two more translations just to throw more clarity on the scripture. Let's read from NLT, Romans 8, 6. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Let's also read from ESV. For to set the mind on the flesh is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. So scripture says here, allowing our flesh to control our minds will lead to death. But not an immediate death. It leads us through mental illness to death. Allowing our flesh to control our mind leads to mental illness. But allowing spirit to control our minds leads to mental health. Allowing our mind to be controlled by flesh leads to death. Allowing our mind to be controlled by the spirit leads to life. This morning I titled my sermon as When when Flesh Controls Mind. When Flesh Controls Mind. So here is our approach this morning as we have been during the last two sermons. There are two different parts to this sermon. The first one, it's an informative session. 
It's an information on mental illness or mental health. Because many of us know and some of us do not know. Even those who know, you know, probably it's a good time to know what exactly we are talking about, what exactly Bible is talking about. The second part of it is how Bible is relevant to mental health or how God could help, in what way God could help us in this situation. So we, then we will soon come back to the scripture that we read from Romans chapter 8. Now let's ask a couple of questions. Why should we study this topic? You know, I'm sure many of you would have that question, why should we study this topic at the church? There are a couple of the reasons why we study this topic. Number one, probably to identify what exactly we are going through right now. Unless someone tells us what we are going through, we may not know what we are going through. You know, that's the reason we have doctors. Unless you go to the doctor and tell your symptoms, the doctor is there to let you know what sickness you are going through in your body. And this morning, unless we know about mental illness, we may not know what we are going through. And we, also, we are also here to know what is about to come on our way. Today, you may be doing well. Today, everything may be going on well, all right. But there is a danger that is coming as we spoke last week. And this morning, we are going to know more about it because we need to know the danger that is coming on our way, especially over our children. And also, it helps us to extend our hospitality or our help to someone, to support to someone who is already going through mental or emotional challenges as we speak. Mental illness, also called mental health disorders, they refer to a wide range of mental health conditions. As we named a couple of them last week, they involve disorders that really affect our mood. They involve disorders that really affect our behavior. Some of the most common disorders that probably we could name here are depression, bipolar disorder, dementia, schizophrenia, anxiety disorders, eating disorders, and various addictive behaviors that we see in all of us. And none of us are not exempt. All of us have an element of that is running through our bloodstreams. So that's the reason we need to be careful to listen what we need to know this morning. The word mental illness can be confusing because it describes a wide range of emotional issues that we go through from mild depression to serious brain disorders that affect our ability to function in the normal way. So when we say mental illness, it covers a wide range of illnesses in the mind. Wide spectrum is what is covered by the term mental illness. What causes mental illness? There are two reasons, two causes. Number one is physical cause. The second reason is the spiritual cause. And we need to know both of them because the mental struggle that we may be going through today, it would have been caused because of the physical condition or maybe spiritual stuff that's going on that we go through in our lives. Mental health is very much linked with the physical condition of the body and the spirit. We have biblical examples for this from the life of Elijah, if you remember whose mental health suffered very badly when he had a conflict with Queen Jezebel. Elijah ran for his life. He came out of his country and he wanted to die. We read that in 1 Kings chapter 19. We will not go there. We see God fixing this physical condition. The condition that he was dealing with was fear. And God was fixing that condition physically by feeding him and by allowing him to take rest that was required for him. And God made him to ask him to sleep, ask him to eat and ask him to sleep. And Elijah could very easily recover from his sudden mental breakdown that he had at that moment on that day when God changed his physical condition. Physical conditions could very well lead towards mental illness. Jonah is another example from the Word of God, whose mental health was really tied with the bad choice that he made. God asked him to go to Nineveh, but he went to Tarshish without obeying God because of his disobedience. Here Jonah directly disobeyed God's word, God's command. And he went into a depressive state, and that was caused by his physical behavior. Elijah wanted to die, 
And here we see Jonah wanted to die. You know, today we, as we come across different group of people in our lives, even at times in our own family, people want to end their lives. That's the reason we have so many suicides reported every day across the world. People come to a point in their lives and they decide it's better to die than to live. It's easier to die than to live. And this morning, the topic that we are dealing with is it's, it's very important because it is something directly related to your life and my life. Here we see Jonah disobeyed God. The disobedience or his mental breakdown came because of his physical behavior of disobedience. If you can go to the next slide. If you can a little bit understand the human brain. The human brain has billions of nerve cells called neurons. And thousands of connections are made between each neuron with the other neurons. And trillions of possible pathways through which are for the nerve impulses to travel among these neurons. So human brain is a very complex system. Because of the fallen nature of this world, like any other organ in our body, it can fail at any moment. And human brain can fail too. And when human brain fails, it causes mental disabilities. Let's talk a little bit about the physical causes. The first physical cause is brain chemical imbalance. There are four major brain chemicals that play a vital role on how we experience happiness in our lives. If you put the next slide already. So they are known as hormones or they are neurotransmitters as they transmit messages through the chemicals that we see in the brain in our body. Couple of them to name, dopamine, it's a rewarding chemical. You know, when something is going good, when you are happy, that chemical is, 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 is allowed in your brain, so you feel happy. Oxytocin, that's known as the love hormone. Serotonin, that stabilizes the mood. Endorphin, that's a kind of painkiller pain when you go through the pain, when you go through some pain in your body, that chemical is released in your brain so that you don't feel much brain, much, much uh, pain. So the levels of hormone and the levels of these neurotransmitters need to be maintained in a proper balance. And when there is an imbalance in the level of these chemicals in the brain, that results in mood disorders, that results in mental health conditions. You know how critical it is, how fragile our human brain is, how amazingly and wonderfully God had created us that today we are able to move, we are able to do everything, but in the behind the scene there is so much going on in our brains for in every fraction of a second. So brain chemical imbalance can really cause mental illness. Secondly, hereditary or genetic reasons. If someone in your family, someone in your blood, with your blood relative, who is a blood relative, if he or she has mental illness, Certain genes can get transmitted on your way and probably you may or I may get hereditary or gene-related mental illness. The third reason may be the environment exposure before birth. You know, that's why we say that it's a, every stage of pregnancy is very important. You need to be happy. You need to be well taken care. You are not supposed to go to certain places. You are not to get, to get exposed to certain radiations. You know, there are, there, there, this, these are all very important because the exposure to environment stresses or inflammatory conditions or, you know, various toxins and alcohol and various, you know, material can cause mental illness as the baby is in the womb. So this is another reason, physical reason, where mental illness could be caused. There may be a couple of many other reasons, you know, how physically someone can go through mental conditions, certain medical, medical conditions in our body can result in mental illness. Prolonged use of certain medications probably can cause mental illness. There are various other reasons, let's not get into the, those things. So apart from the physical causes, there are spiritual causes that can, be, that can lead anyone to mental illness. Spiritual causes. In some situations, we see outside spirits coming 
and attacking people, even it doesn't leave the people of God. If you remember King Saul, King Saul in the Old Testament, he suffered a distressing spirit, a distressing evil spirit that was a tormenting spirit. It came upon King Saul and he was he kind of collapsed mentally. He can't do anything. But he found relief only when David played his harp and gave praises to God. And when David started worshiping God, when David was playing his harp and playing the instrument and praising God, we see that dark tormenting, the demonic spirit was leaving Saul. And Saul was so refreshed. And the distressing spirit moved out of his body when, there, when David was singing the songs and praising God. Spiritual reasons. On another instance, when Jesus entered the gatherings, a mentally ill man came running, you know the story. A demon possessed man who came running out of the tomb and constantly he was crying out and he was cutting himself because mentally he was not ill, he was not well, he was not really do, knowing what he was doing today when people, those who are afflicted mentally, emotionally, at times they do not know what they do. That's what exactly happening in this life of this man. After Jesus, Jesus cast out the demon, he came to his right mind. That's what we see in the scripture. So this spiritual battle, when we win this spiritual battle, we see recovery from the mental illness. So we talked about a couple of reasons, physical reasons, as well as spiritual reasons. Even today, demons afflict people and cause all kind of mental illnesses. So one thing that we need to be clear, all the mental illness is not from demon. All the mental illnesses are not necessarily from physical conditions and physical uh, you know, exposures and stuff like that. It can be a mix of both at times. Until the early 19th century, psychiatry and religion, they were very closely connected. Religious institutions, they were ma mainly responsible for to, to care those who are mentally ill. So in the earlier days, the majority of the people, when they suffer mental health, they used to approach religious ministers. They used to go to the priests. They used to go to the rabbis. Then going to a psychiatrist or then going to a psychologist or a family doctor. That's what they used to do. But during 21st centuries, the trend has really changed. People realize that there may be a spiritual cause. But not only the spiritual cause, there are physical causes, physical reasons that are associated with the mental illness. There are medical reasons. So either physical cause or spiritual cause that can lead human being towards mental illness. Let's talk a little bit about a couple of mental illnesses and as we move forward quickly. Put a list of, you know, short list of different kinds of mental illnesses. Substance related disorders. People who use alcohol and drugs, you know, they often get into this disorder. Neurodevelopment disorders, so attention deficit, uh, hyperactivity disorders, we know ADHD and also ASD, they are all part of this neurodevelopmental disorders. Psychotic disorders, last week we talked about delusion, hallucination, and schizophrenia. These are all psychotic related disorders that anyone can go through. Affective or emotional disorders, major depressive disorders that people go through, mood swings, bipolar disorders, these are all a couple of affective or emotional disorders, depressive disorders, fatigue, insomnia, sleeping difficulties, clinical depression, these are a couple of the depressive disorders, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorders, Recurrent thought that is running in our minds. Recurring worries that comes and affects us, attacks us. Repetitive behavior of people. They all, they all form OCDs. Trauma-related disorders, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. This comes, this occurs after encountering a, a traumatic situation in, the, in life or seeing or personally experiencing it. Anxiety disorders, restlessness, much muscle tension, you know, various painful physical conditions, you know, are they all the result of anxiety disorders? You know, these are a couple of the disorders that are related to mental illness. Some of the spiritual causes I want to talk to you this morning. That especially that comes 
for people of faith. These kind of mental illnesses come for people of faith. And we should not give room to that. This is not experienced by those who do not have God, those who do not follow God. But these are specific mental illness conditions of God's people. I want you to listen this morning. It's also an enemy's trick to attack people of God. I'll name a couple of them. This is what that came in my mind that I could write it down. God has forsaken me. Often we hear from people saying that God has forsaken me. People who do not have God, they don't need to say this, but this is said often by people of God. Why God doesn't heal me? Only my prayer is not answered. You repeat that a couple of times, you will fall into depression. You say that only my prayer is not answered. God has forsaken me. God did not heal me. At times we know that Sin is forgiven, but we are not able to forgive that sin. We know that we cry out to God and ask for forgiveness, but God forgives. And, but we are unable to forgive that problem with people of God that causes mental illness. Unable to forgive and accept certain people, especially within families. We have trouble that can easily cause us cause mental illness in our lives, unable to forget the past, we still carry the past with us, and this is, that is stressing you down, and that is putting you down. Feeling of abandonment, abandonment even by God. At times we say that even God has forsaken me. God has rejected me. And that very thought takes us down, pulls us down, and we are mentally, emotionally affected already. Unable to accept God's will for our lives. We pray for God's will, but when God's will happens to us, we are unable to accept that. We struggle and we complain and we find a difficulty. At times what we expected, what we prayed for, it may not happen. Now we are unable to accept what is given and we worry about it and eventually we are led into depression. And God wants us to be careful. Certain symptoms, certain uh, syndromes that we don't, ex normally people don't experience outside of God are experienced today in the churches and by people of God. Many depressed when their faith in God shakes and they walk away from God. And we as children of God, we as people of God, we as students of the word of God, we as believers of Lord Jesus Christ, we should never allow these symptoms to draw us into mental health. You can go to the next slide. Whatever may be the cause of your mental illness, whatever may be the clinical diagnosis, doesn't matter how many counseling sessions you had, even if you are treated by the best psychiatrists in the world, the ultimate healing for mental illness comes from God. Can I hear an amen? But certainly there is a part that you need to play and I need to play towards reaching this goal. You know, this morning we are here to know what God can do in our lives, in what way God can deliver us from the mental struggles, the emotional struggles that you and I are going through. Let's go back to, let, let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse, uh, chapter 8 verse 6. Reading from NLT, Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Let's read that together. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. When the Bible talks about sinful nature of the flesh, it's not really talking about the actual sin. It is also talking about the characteristics, the behaviors that we exhibit today as a result of sin. Are you with me? Bible doesn't really talk about actual sin. It also talks about the characteristics and the behaviors that today we exhibit because uh, as a result of sin, such as jealousy, pride, fear, unforgiveness, anger, disobedience. Allowing these characters to take control or position of our mind leads to death. Our mental illness. 
Let's see what happened in the life of Elijah and Jonah, and we are going to pray. Elijah allowed fear to control his mind. You know, this is the exact problem. This is the exact you know, reason that we are all getting affected today. So it's very important we know why we are going through this trouble. In the previous chapter, like chapter 19, we, we, we read about how Elijah was so afraid of Queen Jezebel. But in the previous chapter, we see, if you read, Elijah was a great man of God, if you remember. And he was demonstrating the power of God in front of the prophets of Baal. And he brought fire from heaven and the sacrifices were consumed and he killed all the prophets of Baal. Remember the story? And now when Jezebel, when she heard about it, she challenged Elijah. And now when Elijah heard about it, he was so afraid and he allowed his fear to control his mind. Let's read those scriptures. First King chapter 19, verses 2 through 4. First Kings chapter 19, verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. One day was given for Elijah. Verse 3. And when he saw that, Elijah arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there, verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my fathers. The great man of God, the previous day, he brought fire from heaven. Such a great, powerful man of God. We see the very next day running up for his life as he was afraid of Jezebel. All that he did at that moment, he allowed his flesh to control his mind. If he would have allowed the spirit to control his mind, why he should be in fear, such a great man of God. That's where we make mistake in our lives. Everyone is given an option in our lives, either to get depressed and to be led towards death or to overcome the challenges with the help of the Holy Spirit and to move towards life. We are given two challenges, two options in every challenge that we face. Fear is a very powerful weapon that could bring someone not only in depression, even to death in 24 hours time. If that could happen to Elijah today, that could very well happen to anybody if we are not careful. Children of God, it is easy to say that I'm depressed. It is easy to say that I'm lonely. It is easy to say that, you know, I, I, I don't feel like doing anything. I feel numb and I'm emotion free, emotionless and all those kind of things. But we need to know where we make mistakes. We are not people of the world. We are people of God. How do we handle what of God clearly tells us? How do we handle every moment, every situation in our lives? At times we are so fearful. At times we are so afraid of the situation. But one thing that we need to know is we can never allow our fear to control our mind. How do we do it? Seek out for God's help. God may remove that fear factor from your life from your mind so that your mind will not be compelled and forced by the fear. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. There are many scriptures in the word of God. Somebody said there are 365 word of God. Each one for every day. We know all these stories. You know, we know all these kind of things. But we seldom apply these things in our lives. And we need to hold on to the word of God. And God wants us to, you know, that's how we can go spiritually. That's how we can move forward spiritually. You know, God may keep us to face the challenges that are there on the way. There is no life without any challenge. 
Everyone has to face those challenges in some phase or the other in their lives. And God may keep us. That's what is spiritual maturity. So number one, that's what we read. Can you read that together? Do not allow fear to control. Shall we read that together again? Do not allow fear to control your mind. It will lead to mental illness. Jonah prayed almost a similar prayer to God. Let's read from Jonah chapter 4 verse 3. This is what Jonah, a great man of God, a great man of God who was purposed with God, by God. This is what he says in Jonah chapter 4 verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. You know, we follow at times these great model prayers from the Bible. That's what he says, for it's better for me to die than to live. And we all know Jonah suddenly disobeyed God because God wanted him to go to Nineveh, but he went to Tarshish. Suddenly he disobeyed God. Let's read from Jonah chapter 1 verses 2 and 3. Jonah chapter 1 verse 2, well, verse two. Arise, go to Nineveh. That's what God said. The great city and cry out against it for their wickedness have has come up before me. But what Jonah did in verse 3, but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish. God said, go to Nineveh. And Jonah went to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. That's what scripture says. Jonah allowed disobedience to control his mind. Jonah allowed disobedience to control his mind. You know, at times, one mistake that we make, it propagates into further mistakes, further sins in our lives. And they all come into our mind and they attack our mind as Jonah is attacked by disobedience. And as we read from Romans chapter 8, do not allow your flesh to control your mind. Flesh has nothing to do with mind. It cannot understand the purpose of God in your life. You cannot do whatever the flesh says. When we do the, whatever flesh says, we disobey God. Jonah's flesh was saying, go to Tarshish, don't go to Nineveh. And Jonah took that in his mind. The disobedience corrupted his mind. So this is what we learned secondly. Do not allow disobedience to control your mind it will lead to mental illness not only that jonah became angry with god let's read verse 4 sorry verse 1 jonah chapter 1 chapter 4 verse 1 when god did not destroy nineveh because the people of god people in nineveh they all cried out to god they turned their wicked ways, turned from their wicked ways, and they came to God, and God did not destroy. And the Bible says that displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry with God. And he said reasons, you know, that's the reason I said I will not go to Nineveh, because you are a God who relented rel rel when the wicked turns back to you. When I go to Nineveh and I prophesy there that God is going to destroy, when they turn back to you, you are not going to be, you know, destroy Nineveh and I will become a false prophet there. I'm not going there. I don't want to go there. And now when God did not destroy Nineveh, Jonah was so totally displeased and he became angry. To whom? To whom? Must be with God. And verse 3 says, therefore now, Oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it's better for me to die than to live. And verse 4 says, Then the Lord said, Then the Lord asked Mo Jonah, Jonah, is it right for you to be angry? You know, Jonah, Jonah's anger made him to lose his power. Jonah's anger made him to lose his strength. In a moment, he lost his confidence and he lost his trust. And he became totally hopeless and he is asking God to kill him. It was, we all know that it is not to get angry with God. There are many situations in our lives. We are still angry. 
Not only with people, not only with family members, not only with friends. We are angry with God. God had not done anything, any mistake. God had asked us to obey. We did not obey the first uh, for friend. And then in later on we see that's hitting us back. What can God do? do? God, God, what can God do in this situation? At times we are anger. We have anger. We are angry with God. We are angry with people. And when we know what as we learn, when we allow the anger to control our mind, we are taken into mental illness. So the number three, that's what we learned. Do not allow anger to control your mind. It will lead to mental illness. You know, I don't know what this morning God is telling you. There are certain avenues that we have opened already in our lives. And they are taking a toll on us, taking us towards, leading us towards mental illness. But this morning God is telling us, I want to deliver you. Let's not be anger, angry with God and with people. Let's be forgiving. Jonah's one of the other problem was unforgiveness. Jonah was unforgiving. An unforgiving heart, unforgiving heart gets angry with God, angry with people. Every time we have it in mind when we see people, we become angry. Even after knowing that he is such a good God, Jonah even could not forgive God. Jonah even could not forgive the people of Nineveh. He wanted them to get destroyed. What a heart a man of God could have. What a heart a prophet like Jonah could have. He knew very well that God is a compassionate God. God is having compassion over people of Nineveh. Let's read Jonah chapter 4, verse 2, the second part of it, if we can read it. For I know, Jonah says, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in mercy and loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. I know you are such a good God. But now what is your problem, Jonah? Why are you, why are you unable to forgive people? And why are you unable to forgive God? An unforgiving heart will make us to get angry. Every time when you deal with that person, that anger comes within, from inside of you because you are, not, you are not forgiven that person. May it be between spouse, or parents and children, or someone in the church, someone in the family, someone outside in the, in the society or in the workplace. Because we have not forgiven that person, that individual, the moment we see that anger comes out and we try to control, but it's seen, it's, it's already seen in your life, in your face. An unforgiving heart will eventually cause the person to die rather than to live. An unforgiving heart is filled with negativity and absolutely there is no joy. This so morning we are talking about certain things that we cannot allow to control our mind. We cannot have unforgiveness towards God and towards people. I pray that this morning God may speak to us. Fourth, number four, do not allow unforgiveness and bitterness to control your mind. It will lead to mental illness. These four issues that we spoke about this morning they are the majority reason, 80% of the mental illness today that we experience. It's because of either one of this. Fear, disobedience, anger, unforgiveness and bitterness. They trigger emotions within us. They affect our mood. They affect our behavior. And eventually they will lead us to mental illness. And as children of God, we have enough problem with these, dealing with these things. We find it difficult at times. And this morning, God may give us grace. God may give me grace. God wants us, to, these emotions, not to control our mind. Instead, he wants us to be, our minds to be controlled by his spirit. God wants us to live a life that is full, that, that, that's, that's in its fullness. In good mental health, in peace and in harmony. 
There are certain things that happens to our lives that, that we may not be able to avoid, but these are the reasons, if, the, if these are the reasons that are causing mental illness in our lives, certainly there is a way out, and we need to take a step there so that God may help us this morning. God has not given us a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. What we need this morning is that sound mind, that uncorrupted, the mind that is able to forgive, the mind that is able to accept, the mind that is totally out of fear, the mind that totally trusts in God, that, that mind that is willing to obey, there is no disobedience. Your flesh may go through many emotions and many of these challenges, struggles as we live on this earth. But as children of God, we should be able to draw a line between our flesh, between our mind, and decide what to allow into the mind. Because when mind gets corrupted, it leads us towards mental illness. I pray this morning God may speak to us. This morning if we are willing, God is here to give us a sound mind. Shall we all arise this morning as we get into a time of prayer?